All right, welcome back. Uh, this is a how to make more money in appliance repair. Uh, that's that's uh, kind of our main motivation. Apart from taking care of our customers, we can do both. This is a 12 year old washer, a duet washer um, that I repaired the MCU. You see that part up top that's circled. That's a trans. It's a power transistor, and uh, it was shorted. It's uh, totally defective. Uh, the washer would not agitate, and this is what a uh, good transistor from another board tests like. Uh, basically, it's OL or, or 0.4 uh, in one direction. There you go. And so that's that's going to be what you can ex expect from a, a good transistor. In contrast, uh, the transistor that I tested uh, is basically shorted across all leads. You can see basically that's a short right there between the outer leads right to center left to center they're all shorted and so that's what you want to test in circuit to see if it's bad on all of these any of these uh, power transistors that could happen to you so i'm uh, going to go ahead and put the uh, new transistor in and i'm going to solder it now this is a little tricky and the reason is, is because it's a dual layered board that means that you got soldering on the top and you got soldering on the bottom. And the tricky part about it is you got you know parts in the way uh, where you'd normally want to put your soldering iron, so you kind of got to work around them. Um, I use my conical uh, tip; it's a fine tip uh, for this one. You just you don't want to go in there with a large tip; it's just uh, not as manageable. Uh, and that's why I have a few tips for my uh, soldering iron. And you can see the the middle the the left and the right pins were actually not too bad, uh, but once I got into the uh, the middle pin, that was that was a little tougher to get to. And you don't want to spend too much time on the actual um, component lead because you can't actually damage the internal part of the component. So um, just you know just get on there you know wait a couple seconds to heat up the pad and the pin put the solder in there let it melt and get off and uh, if if you have to redo the solder just kind of wait till it cools down a little bit before you go back in there so just a little tip for you and on the other side as you can see it was uh it was uh, quite a bit uh, easier uh, to get to this because there's nothing in the way uh, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that they all kind of lined up uh, uniformly because I'm going to put that heat sink back on there. Um, and you, you want them to all sit uh, the same on that heat sink. Okay. So, there you go. That's that's pretty much it. Got those, uh, that soldering looking good. What I do is I use uh, isopropyl alcohol over 90%. And a stiff bristle brush, and it cleans it right up. Um, can can't really even tell that uh, that it's not factory. That's that's the way I like it to look. And we are good. So the next step was to take all the heat sink compound, the old heat sink compound, off of all the uh, of the heat sink and the parts. And this is the heat sink compound I carry on my truck. Two things you don't want to do. One, you don't want to get too much on there, uh, or else the part will get uh, will be too far away uh, from contacting the heatsink. And the other thing you don't want to do is get uh, too little on there. So you just kind of want to, you know, spread it uh, with a thin layer. Okay, and getting this back together was a bit tricky because it, you know it's kind of like a puzzle. <laughs> and interestingly enough, you have to put uh, desolder the bridge rectifier. Uh, to to get the uh, casing off. I don't know why they did it that way, but that's the way they did it. So when I, I'm going to go ahead and re-solder that uh, bridge rectifier. One thing that you want to be just be careful of is that rectifier goes in one way. And uh, what I did is just for my reference, I took a picture before. I took it out uh, of the board, and that way, if you're not sure how a component that you took out goes in, you have that visual reference. Uh, so I think that most of you on the re-engineers uh, know to do that, but 
for those that don't, now you do. And yeah, just uh, go ahead and clean that uh, those pads up again. And yeah, this is really, I wouldn't say call it necessary, but just it makes the, the solders uh, look nicer. Um, it also helps that, you know, if you have a cold solder joint or something like that, it's going to make it more evident if, if you inspect it with the uh, magnifier loop. So I went ahead and applied more heat sink compound to that uh, bridge rectifier. And... After that, put uh, put it all back together, put that uh, heat sink on there. It's a little tricky. You don't want to force force it down uh, really hard. You don't want to break a component. So I was just kind of easing it in there and just wanted to be careful. And it went in really smoothly, actually. And uh, just last step is just putting it all back together. You want to be very careful when using a screw gun. Um, to put these back together because you can break easily the PCB but yeah I've been doing it 20 years so I know what to do but uh, if you want to hand tighten those uh, torques and that would probably be a safer bet so this is uh, the Duet washer and it was uh, I tested it out it was, did a full rinse and spin um, the average it was around 0.3.4 amps uh, pulling uh, during the wash and at its peak, I found it was 1.4 amps, so I was very happy with that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you find a shorted output transistor, go ahead and replace it and um, save the customer some money. I'll go ahead and put a link to the part on the re-engineer group, and we'll see you next time.